going? Good! Um, it's a very hot day in Sofia right now, so I think I just ate a whole ice cream box, like a big box of ice cream. It's very hot, but now it's fine because it's already 7 and yeah, just yeah. a little bit more chill. Yeah, so Sofia, Bulgaria, yes? Yes, exactly. I live here for 10 years now already. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, um, well, let's start with some, if I was in Bulgaria, like, what would we do together? Let's, like, explore Bulgaria together. Oh, wow. Have you ever been in Bulgaria at all? I haven't, no. No. Wow. Well, I, I guess it might be scary, right? Because there's not much information about Bulgaria, and that's what I, you know, find out from people that never been here. It's this place that nobody knows anything about. Um, but the thing is, it's pretty cool here. I mean, my favorite thing to do, especially this year, is definitely going to the mountain and do some hiking. Um, so I would probably, you know, take you to some super high peak <laughs> so we can climb some mountains together. Also, there is a place in Bulgaria that I really liked. It's a little bit of scary, you know, rich, like super steep from both both sides. And I like, did this for the first time a few weeks ago, I think. Uh, my my legs are sh were shaking. It was I was scared. I'm usually not, you know, I, I love being scared. Uh, <laughs> I am scared and I love being scared, which is fine. Uh, so this place is really cool. So I would definitely think that we can we can go there. What is what is the ridge called? It's Concheto Ridge. So it is in Pirin Mountains. We have so many mountains in, in Bulgaria. Um, it's in Pirin Mountains. It's a little bit less high than the highest peak in this mountain, but we can see, you know, like a very, very pretty panoramic view of the whole mountain and a few others in the distance as well. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I'll have to definitely look that up on Google Street View. Um, obviously, it will not be the same, but I have been seeing some of your pictures online um, from your hikes and stuff, and it just looks amazing. Um, yeah. I, I used to live in Colorado in the US, and there was like r right at the base of a mountain, and so we hiked all the time, and I miss that. Um, I don't have yeah. a lot of cardio here in New York, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe just go up and down the stairs. <laughs> Too much, yeah, too much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I think you're right. As I started getting into sort of, um, so I did like Serbia, I did Slovakia. Um, once I started getting into those countries, I didn't have a huge amount. Now, granted, you can Google and see like what are the sites, but I didn't have a huge amount of like preconceived notions about, you know, the country or the people there. Yeah. Um, I guess when you're talking about the lack of information about some of these areas, um, why do you think that is? Oh, wow. That's a very complex question. But um... I don't know. Basically, the institutions here work very chaotically. <laughs> so I don't think there's, you know, one um, one direction that everyone goes goes to. So there's no one, you know, a whole, let's say, promotion of the country that will be, you know, so big and in, in all other countries around. Also, we've been under communism for a very long time and uh, only 30 years ago. Uh, we are not, so it's 89, I think. Uh, which, you know, when the democracy starts, uh, all the institutions start working, let's say, from the beginning, kind of from the beginning uh, again. It's a new new way of working, right? So this thing of marketing and promotion and giving this uh, whole information about the country, I would, I would say, would come like a little bit later. There's no whole product formed around the country and the brand, let's say. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I guess, um, well, because of that, I would assume that there are like quite a bit of stereotypes. I cannot really re like think of any, you know, I don't know what to expect going to Bulgaria, but again, that's just like lack of knowledge um, about the yeah. area. But I assume that because not maybe a lot of people are going there, there are these sort of like narratives that remain. Um, can you talk about some of those? Like what <laughs> stereotype do you want to combat? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um... Well, it's it's definitely shocking for people when they come here. But you've been to the Balkans, you know that it's a little bit chaotic. Um, everything is chaotic. Uh, one one thing that I really, you know, also 
it, not, it doesn't pisses me off. But if you want to, you know, piss off a Bulgarian, you basically have to say that we're using the Russian alphabet. So this thing will be, you know, the worst thing that you can say when you come to Bulgaria. We are both, so both of the countries, you're Cyrillic, you know, these weird letters <laughs> that nobody understands, basically. But the thing is that Russia took that from, from that area, basically. So the Cyrillic alphabet was uh, created in Bulgarian lands, and then uh, it was implemented in other countries. So I think that's one thing that we really don't like hearing when foreigners come to Bulgaria. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's now funny, though. Sort of switching gears, how has Bulgaria been dealing with the pandemic? Oh, um, yeah, in the beginning it was very nice. I mean, we started doing the hard measures very early on, so we didn't have many cases at all, actually. And then when summer came and, uh, you know, the, the measures were, became more ease, easy, um, we started getting more and more cases. Not that much, again, uh, we, for a 7 million country, of 7 million people country, we have around 200 new cases per day and only around 400 deaths, total deaths. So I don't think, you know, we are super hard, but um, hardly hit. Um, but it is now going up. So I guess that we'll have a little bit more, you know, strict measures coming up in, in autumn. Although I think governments are waiting for the summer season to be over so businesses can make some money, you know. <laughs> Yeah, is um yeah, I guess what were the measures at the beginning? Um did you guys have like curfews and stuff like that? Um no, it was never really a very strict lockdown. So we were just everything was closed except for stores, so, so supermarkets and pharmacies and uh, basically you don't have anywhere to to go. Uh we were not allowed to be together with other people outside. Uh we also they closed the national parks and the mountains and the parks in the city, which was really, you know, bad <laughs> for everyone who likes, uh, you know, going in the mountains in the fresh air. Uh, and that continued, I think, for a month, kind of. Okay. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a little bit weird in the beginning, but I guess for everyone it was, you know, shocking. It was new, so... So what, uh, you seem like you're a pretty big traveler. You're going to Croatia tomorrow. Um, what, uh, what do you miss most about like pre-coronavirus days? <laughs> oh yeah, I've been thinking about that quite a lot actually. And I can most likely tell you what I'm not missing from pre-corona times. And <laughs> that's, that's definitely uh, traveling by plane. I don't miss that at all. Like I hate flying. I'm one of those people that I cannot stand being in a plane. I get anxiety attacks. I think I'm pretty rational usually and, you know, smart person. <laughs> but if I'm on a plane, I just hate it. And I, I don't know, I cannot help with, uh, with the fear. So I'm definitely not missing that. And I'm enjoying traveling locally and by bus, train or car. So I think that's, <laughs> that's better for me now. Yeah. Well, how are you getting to Croatia? By bus. So we have a direct bus from Sofia. It's only, you know, two countries away. So nice. yeah, I'm going to okay. How long do is that. the bus ride? It will be 12 hours. It's a good so it's a, long bus it's ride. An, it is a long one, but it's a nice night bus, so I hope I can sleep a little bit. Also, I've done this trip quite a lot in the past because I, I was working in Slovenia uh, for three years, so I was traveling for you know for business and for work with uh, with the bus or with the car quite a, quite a few times nice yeah um, and it's a nice way to to see an area as well you get to see like all this countryside that you wouldn't get to see if you were flying um, so I totally agree with you. I mean, you know, I have to fly because I want to get to some countries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anything else, and I am very bad on boats. Um, <laughs> but I'm also a big advocate of like driving. So usually when I get into some place, I'll like rent a car because I want to see all these little towns and places along the way, uh, not just like into the big city and out. Um, that's the best ride. But yeah. yeah, it's the best. I don't, I don't ride a car, unfortunately. So. All the time I have to use uh, public transportation. 
Yeah. Okay. It's still fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's still fine. It gets the job done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, talk to me a little bit more about Bulgaria and its culture. So like what Ooh. are the traditional dishes of Bulgaria? Um, so what do people love food, dancing? Is there like a traditional sort of Bulgarian dance? Yeah, well, there's so much. Uh, the thing about Bulgaria is that it's basically part of the Balkans. And I think that's the bigger culture that we can talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, because all of these countries in the Balkans here uh, have a lot of things in common. Um, so the food is kind of similar. So we have, let's say, a, a meal that every country prides to be their own, but it's kind of the same meal in, in every country. <laughs> and we're just fighting, you know, which country invented that. So that's quite a funny. Um, <laughs> Sorry, which so country is that? Uh, so we have banica in Bulgaria. Banica, it's like a pastry dish with a lot of cheese. Mm. Uh, in other countries, it is called burek somewhere uh yeah so it has a few different things but it's kind of the same thing okay yeah. Say, yeah also the i i think you've heard that in in hungary or slovakia that uh, they have the palinkovets yeah the alcoholic drink yes uh, we have rakia which is let's say the national alcoholic drink it's very high spirited um so every country here in the balkans have it and um yeah you can you can have it everywhere everywhere basically <laughs> and that's like a fruit wine right like peach or plum right oh yes it's made from fruits but fermented fruits and doesn't look or taste like a wine at all it's yeah, like okay. super hard yeah <laughs> no I, I don't drink that <laughs> <laughs> all right um and then in terms of like what's happening in the country right now do you want to talk about any any of that um Mm, yeah, well, I think the biggest thing that we can talk about and uh, yeah, it's it's a bit weird. So we do have like the biggest protests in the country at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're now going on for the 30th day, so 3-0. Um, basically, it's the biggest protest for since seven, eight years ago. Uh, and People are asking for the resignation of the government, of the prime minister, uh, also the prosecutor. It's basically a protest against the corruption in Bulgaria, against the, you know, all, all of these political gains and stealing money and uh, not ruling for, for the people. So that's happening right now. Like in Sofia, we have a huge, uh, huge gatherings of people, even though, you know, we are in Corona times, which is also kind of uh, a weird time for that but I guess people just you know have the power have the energy now and um, they want to fight for something so yeah I think it's just a lot of stuff on top of each other and I don't yeah. I think it's I think it's good to a certain extent we need to talk about these things and we need to figure out what's going on because there seems to be a lot of people who are hurting and angry and just not getting taken care of by the system yeah definitely people had quite a lot of time to you know to not be distracted by news, not be distracted by, you know, all the entertainment hmm. and all the, you know, information that's happening all the time. And then we were locked. It was, you know, suddenly, oh, so that's important. We actually have to think about that and fight for that. So, yeah, I guess this definitely contributed to, you know, people waking up. Yeah. Um, what, uh, and sorry for my ignorance, um, I didn't know there was uh, some protests happening in Bulgaria, but what, um, you talked about corruption, can you like expand upon that? Like what are some of the things Ooh. that are happening? Oh, the only thing is corruption in Bulgaria is huge. So it can happen everywhere, it can happen in the streets, it's not even hidden that well. Uh, so there are like public scandals that are happening all the time, all the time. Um, also during elections, it's very, um, uh, very popular or <laughs> very common for, you know, parties to buy votes. And this is also like very obvious. Uh, I mean, I've seen it with my eyes as well. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of things that are happening that piss off people. Mm, and yeah, I think the beginning of this protest was, like a very small scandal on the Bulgarian Black Sea coast for some kind of a public property that was made private. Um, 
you know, illegally. Uh, and then this just, you know, people just snapped and uh, it was, it became like a huge wave. But this is just one example of everything that's happening in the country, unfortunately. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's about it. Thank you so much for Ooh. sharing about Bulgaria. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, and I really hope that next year uh, I can do the Mongol rally or just we can start traveling again by plane so that I can come and <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, okay. Thank you for yeah chatting with me and I'm happy to tell the world more about Bulgaria. <laughs> Absolutely, thanks so much, Maria. Thank you, Bailey. See you okay. around.